know, my friends, I've been very busy since we last saw each other. Um, when you listen to the quarantine haircutting story, I hope, and if you haven't, you can always go um, back and listen to it. Maud Hart Lovelace is my name, and I'm the author and writer of the Betsy Tacey books. And if you remember, during the story from 1900, my dear friend Bic was very, very sick with the disease called diphtheria, and she was quarantined, and we needed to figure out what to do to cheer her up because she was in bed for weeks and weeks and weeks. And a surprise, well, I don't know about you, but I love surprises. And so we sent her some surprises with a fishing pole, if you remember. Well, I was thinking now during your quarantine of the coronavirus of 2020, I'm sure there are people who could use some cheering up, don't you think? Do you know someone who is quarantined all by themselves? And maybe where you live, you've got brothers and sisters and everything is quite wild and loud. But for someone quarantined alone, it could be very lonesome. And a surprise, something from you could make their day. Hmm, I wonder what that could be. Well, it could also be someone who's not feeling well, too. Well, I was thinking about this, and I was also thinking about, I bet a lot of your art supplies are in school, in your desk, am I right? Your crayons, um, markers, all of those things that you're used to using. So I scrounged around a little bit and I came up with some materials that I think we could use to make a surprise for someone. Now, one of my very favorite things to use, you can make so many things from a brown grocery bag. Mm -hmm. So many things. And I thought we could do this, send something in the mail with a stamp on it because when you get something in the mail with your name written on it, it's very exciting, don't you think? And especially if that person recognizes your handwriting. Well, this is what we, I thought we could do. I cut two arms right here, and I began to fold them like an accordion back and forth and back and forth till it looks something like this. Can you see this? Yeah, we would have two of these. And then cut a side from the paper bag and on the side that doesn't have any writing on it, you're gonna put two handprints. And I scrounged around it in my drawer, in my kitchen, I found some very old, very old crayons. And sometimes in those drawers you don't look at very much, you find things. I'm going to, I'm going to trace my hand two times, around and around and around, and then, or else you could even do this, you could fold that piece of paper, and then you would cut your hand out. I'm just gonna start it, and then I'll show you. Now my hand looks quite large. You cut the hand out all the way around, so you have two hands, and then I have an envelope right here. And I'll show you what we're going to do with that accordion, two accordion arms and the hands. You unfold this. Now remember, you don't need any fancy paper, anything like that. Watch. This comes right out of the envelope and you either have a wave with your hand or you have a hug that you can give that person right through the mail. And you can write on these slips of paper. You might want to do it before you fold it up, but if you don't, you can still write on it with, um, even if you folded it, you could write your message. And whatever you write, think about what would, what would put a smile on that person's face. 
So you might say, I miss you. Hope you're feeling well. This is a giant hug. Whatever you do, you can start your sentences with a capital and you can leave spaces in between your words. And what do you put at the end of your little sentence? Right. Periods. Or, do you know what this is? Exclamation marks. You can do that too. So you can write your message and then you fold it all up. You can color on it as much as you want to, if you can find some crayons. <laughs> fold it up and you just, these are very sturdy, this paper. Put it in an envelope if you've got one. Right in there. And then, put it in the mail. You're looking empty like this. You, you know we have to put an address on it. So at the top here, I put my name, Maud Hart. Um, that was my name when I was eight years old. And I put my address in Mankato, Minnesota, where I grew up. And then this is to my friend, Bick, who was very, very sick. 332 Center Street, Mankato, Minnesota. Now, before I put this in the mail, I have to do something to the back. What's that? Right, I have to either lick it or put some um, sponge on it. And then there's one other thing that is necessary so that this will get to my, the person I'm sending it to. What is it? Right, a stamp. I just happen to have some stamps here. I would take a stamp right off of here and you can ask your parents about this. And you put the stamp right on right on the edge here, on the upper right-hand corner. And then you are ready to mail this surprise. And I guarantee that the person receiving this will feel so much better knowing that you are thinking about them. Now, you might say, well, Maud, I don't have an envelope and I'm not gonna mail it. I'd like to give it to my neighbor because my neighbor is all alone. Hmm. Well, I know that sometimes we get mail that we don't really want. <laughs> Does that happen to, to you? Yes. And so you can use those envelopes and you can cover up all the things that all the um, addresses and names on the envelope, and I colored a little bit on there, and I opened it up, and this is the hug I made for that person. Here's one from just regular paper, and I made some rainbow hands that can go around, and then once again, you can write your message to your neighbor, either next door or upstairs in your apartment building, wherever wherever that person might be. And of course you need to ask your mom and your dad um, all about this and if it's okay. So those are the two um, thoughts that I had about surprises um, that you could do to cheer someone up. There are lots of other things that you can check out on the um, distant learning page and I hope that you do. And I love spending time with you, my friends. And, well, I can't wait. I can't wait to see what you are going to come up with. Goodbye for now. Bye-bye.